All right, check this bike out. This one's kind of a rare one. This is a 1977 Suzuki RM125. So this bike was actually found in a barn. I guess it was sitting for over 20 years. Um, the previous owner was an old guy, and I guess he passed away pretty recently. And uh, this was sitting in his barn along with a bunch of other bikes. And a friend of the guy went and uh, kind of took all the good bikes out of the barn and then sold them. So he only owned them for like two days, but he sold this one to me for $500. Um, these come with the aluminum gas tanks. Kind of a one year thing they did here. This one's all dented in, but you can see it is aluminum. The cap is on there really tight, so we'll see what the inside looks like here soon, but all original. And you can see the scuffs from the people riding it. Um, that's very, very common on these aluminum gas tanks. The paint just rubs off like that. But this thing's pretty much complete. Every piece is there. You can see silencers there. Original seat is there. Even the number plate on the front's there. And I think these are the original tires as well. Because um, it says made in Japan on them. Bridgestone Motocross. You can see all the covers are there, chain guards there. Original Makuni carb is there. Plastics are all there. Plastics are really rough. They're faded. They're supposed to be the same yellow color as that. Um, fender you can see was repaired with rivets and a plate, but that's still there. <laughs> Rear tire has some stud holes in it from probably riding on the ice. Chain's really rusty, but uh, I believe that's the original sprocket on there. Aluminum rims. So it's very, very unique find here to be in all original condition like this. It was repaired at one point right here. Looks like some type of glue with tape. We'll see what that looks like on that cover. But that's a magnesium cover. Let's see if the clutch is pulling in here. Clutch pulls in. And then it does actually have compression, which is amazing. So. The whole rear brake is there, the whole linkage. Got the drum brake on the front here that's still in working condition. Not sure if those are original grips or not. But yeah, this one's pretty cool. But yeah, today we're going to be tearing into this thing and we're gonna see if we can get it to fire up for the first time in 20 plus years. Let's get a little walk around of it. You can see it's all full of the barn dust here. <laughs> Super cool looking bike. Yeah. That is a sweet looking bike right there. All right, let's start digging into it. See if we can get this thing fired up today. All right, we've got her in the garage. Let's start uh, looking at this thing. The first thing I wanna do, get the gas cap off, check out the inside of the tank here. See if we can get this thing to crack open here. There we go. <laughs> There's still gas in it. That's crazy. You can see one of the benefits of the aluminum gas tank is it doesn't really rust. So, yeah, look at that. It's got uh, pre-mix in there <laughs> from 20 plus years ago. That is crazy. But look how nice the gas tank is. That means it doesn't leak, which is a great sign. All right, so here are what these uh, 1977 RM125 gas tanks are going for. So this one is in perfect condition. It says restored aluminum fuel tank, 
That one's going for $1,400. This one, that's all discolored and stuff, is going for $300 plus $30 bucks in shipping. This one's going for $465 plus $45 in shipping. So they're going for big money. I mean, I paid $500 for this bike. So yeah, those are the only three up there. That's probably why they're going for so much. Kind of rare. Um, but if we can get these dents out of the tank, that would be great. So, so if anyone has any recommendations on how to get these dents out, that would be awesome. Curious to see if this thing has any oil in it. It will be interesting. <laughs> there we go. I don't know if there's a dipstick in there or not. Kind of getting caught where the clutch connects to. No dipstick. Do we have any oil in there? Okay, oil looks brand new <laughs> somehow. So that looks really good. We'll drain that and just confirm it, but at least there's oil in it. Look at this. I can get my hand right to the spark plug without taking anything off. That is awesome. So having that easy access here is really nice. Along with the carb, I mean that, that's gonna take five seconds to get that carb out, so. I like that. <laughs> Let's see what this spark plug looks like. All right, boot looks to be in good condition still. <laughs> that's on there pretty good. Yeah. Smells like uh, starting fluid. So I think the previous owner was trying to fire this thing up with a little spray. But uh, yeah, it looks like it uh, was running pretty rich at one point. I don't know if we're gonna have spark. That's gonna be the, the question here. But before we kick it over a bunch, let's get that cylinder and piston lubricated. All right, we're using a little two-stroke oil. It's gonna push a little down here. Put a little bit more in there. Oh, there we go. All right. Try to kick this thing over a little bit. Feels pretty smooth. Yeah, there's definitely compression. It's pushed off my thumb. We'll do a compression test later on it. But uh, let's see if it has spark. Really, really hope it does. That is awesome. <laughs> that is sweet. So, we have spark. Do we have enough compression? All right, let's get a compression tester in there. See what happens. All right. See what we get. We're hoping for above 100. Above 90, this thing will probably run, but it won't have much power. And from sitting 25 years, I'm guessing the rings are a little stuck. So hopefully those free up once we get this thing running. So I'm thinking the air box is underneath this plastic cover here. All right, let's see. Break the plastic off here. There we go. So it must be on the other side. Or uh, 
I think you gotta take off the seat. Actually. Looks like a bolt right there. Alright, seat should pull off of here. There we go. That's a nice clean seat. <laughs> I think that's the original air filter in there. That is something. So there's just a little pin holding that on. This whole thing can come out. I think the foam's pretty much junk on this. We've got the cover. This whole thing can come out of here. Like that. Yeah, foam is just disintegrating on it. You can see, but it's nice you still have the cage and all the components of the air filter. So we just have to buy a new piece of foam, basically. But yeah, this is pretty rough. Just kind of clear that out before we attempt anything, but yeah, it's all clear underneath there. The carburetor. All right, here we go, moment of truth. What will we get for compression? When you throttle open, all the way, kick this thing over. No way. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that is really good compression. 170 pounds of compression for an old 125. Doesn't get much better than that. That's pretty good. This thing is absolutely gonna fly if we can get this thing to fire up. <laughs> That's so cool. All right, on to the fuel system. We've got spark, we've got compression. Now we just need fuel. All right, we've gotta check out this old fuel in here. See what that looks like. Let's see if this will come off of here. I have to get the heat gun out. Just heat up that line a little bit. Pretty brittle from sitting 20 plus years. Get our clear cup out, and <laughs> let's see what this looks like. If our pet cock is working here. I'm gonna break it off here. There we go. Oh, it's coming out. Looks a little rust color, doesn't it? <laughs> Petcock still works and everything. That's amazing. Twenty-five year old fuel. Huh. Clamp right here. There's gonna be one over on this side. Usually I like to heat up these a little bit. I want to rip the manifold here. Get a little heat in there. Let's see if we can get that carb out. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. 
all the original lines are still on it. Got the choke, it's still working. Slide is still in there. <laughs> Needle feels good. Slide looks really good, no corrosion, no rust on the slide here. Let's see if it's still going up and down, yep. All right, that feels really good. Let's take a peek inside. This thing open. Might be really bad. <laughs> wow. It's not gonna budge. There we go. <laughs> She's open. Yeah. She's a little tacky in there. A little sticky. Might need the ultrasonic cleaner for this one. But uh, we basically got the gasket to be saved on there, so that's good. Yeah, she's pretty sticky. Main jet completely clogged. Pilot jet looks pretty clear, actually. Oh, that pushed right through. That's awesome. The old brass float. Hopefully that doesn't have any pinholes in it. And then here's the needle. That off. Needle should pull out of there. That looks pretty good. Alright, let's get the main jet out. You can see how clogged that is. Everything's kind of gunked, as to be expected. All right, that looks pretty clean, actually. Running a 30 pilot. Yeah, she's pretty clogged. That's a small pilot. All right, then we've got the air screw on the side here. One, one turn out. Spring come out with it. There's a little choke mechanism, I'll take that out. Looks perfect. It's 
working. So everything looks pretty good, besides the uh, the gunk in there. So we'll let this sit in the ultrasonic cleaner for about an hour, and then come back and see what that looks like. All right, carburetor just came out of the ultrasonic cleaner. You can see that did a pretty good job cleaning all that out. We just blew through it with the air compressor too, so every passageway is cleaned out. Here's the other part of the carb here. This is just old gasket material. That's why that's not cleaned off, but uh, yeah, you can see how well it cleaned up the brass here. Everything looks really clean, nice and good. Main jet, pilot jet, float. So we can put this thing back together, install it, and we'll see if this bike fires up. All right, we got the carburetor back installed, airbox cleaned out. Now let's get this gas tank drained. Here, here, quick. Shouldn't take too long, there's not a whole lot in there. So, who thinks this bike is gonna fire up? We'll put some 40 to 1 mix in here and uh, We'll give it a go. We've got spark, we've got compression, and now we should have fuel going to the engine. So this thing should fire up with some fresh fuel. Should be interesting. I'm wondering what this thing sounds like. Should sound pretty good with that, that higher compression. <laughs> I really hope it fires up. But uh, we'll let this drain out for a little bit, and we'll come back and add some fresh premix to it. All right, let's see if this is gonna shift through the gears here. There's first gear, second gear, uh oh, there's third gear. We skipped a couple gears in there. There we go, now it's shifting. There we go, there's back to neutral. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Cool. It's shifting. All right, oil drain plug right there. Fourteen millimeter. Oh, you breaker bar. Ooh, bunch of water in the bottom end, it looks like. That's not looking too good. I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but a bunch of water came out. Guessing it got in through the case right here. See that? All right, we're gonna heat up the uh, the cases here, and hopefully that oil drains a little bit better. Right now, it's draining pretty slow. wasn't a whole lot of oil in there. And you can see it's mixing with the water that was in the case. So hopefully everything works. I'm guessing those clutch plates are stuck in there. But uh, most of the time when the bike sits, those clutch plates become attached and then the clutch doesn't work. Let's get some fresh oil in here. Got some 10W40 wet clutch oil going in. 
takes 800 milliliters. Alright, let's get some premix in here. All right, here we go. Let's see if she fires up. This would be the first start in over 20 years. Choke it. Turn the gas on. First start in 20 years. Idle slow too. That is amazing. Look how low that idles. So awesome. Fired right up, like what was that, third kick? Wow, 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 that is amazing. I think it was like third or fourth kick. Fired right up, and it idles perfectly. Like what the heck? The carburetor's not leaking any gas. I'm not seeing any smoke from the head gasket or anything. Um, I'm not seeing any oil leak, so the engine's pretty tight. So I think we've got a good runner on our hands. So let's see if this back tire pumps up here and we'll attempt to ride this thing. I think it's holding so far. 
Yeah, it's holding a little bit. Cool. <laughs> See if the front one holds. This one's really dry rotted. I think both tires are holding. We'll bring a pump just in case, but yeah, that's holding air. Wow. <laughs> All right, let's go load this thing back up on the truck. Go take it to the land for a little test drive. All right, made it out to the land here. All the snow is pretty much gone, so we can rip it pretty good today. But uh, yeah, we'll see how this thing rides. I don't think I've ever ridden a 1977 Suzuki RM125. Especially not one that's been sitting for 20 plus years. <laughs> so, we'll see if it moves, see if that clutch works, and take it for the first ride.
wasn't expecting that. This thing's a little ripper, holy cow. Clutch is working great, it's shifting great. Front brake works awesome, back brake does not work. I think the pads are gone. Um, and the only complaint I have is the, uh, the foot peg doesn't have the spring right here. So every time I hit a bump or something, that comes up and it's hard to get my foot back on there. This one still has a spring. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty quick. <laughs> you can see in the video, it's, it's quick for a little 77. But uh, yeah, it sounds so good. <laughs> That's amazing. For 500 bucks, I mean, what can you buy for 500 bucks? Well, we got this thing pressure wash, looking pretty clean. Tank cleaned up pretty good. Fender's cleaned up. Seat looks nice. But yeah, I am pleasantly surprised that this thing runs as good as it does. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with it yet. Um, we might do a light restoration on it. And I'd like to get the dents out of the tank for sure. Probably a new seat cover on it. You can see a couple rips in the seat. A new uh, rear fender. And then sandblast the engine. Get a new top end in there. Freshen up everything. New gasket kit. I mean, the pipe has zero dents in it. Not a single dent in the pipe, which is crazy. I mean, it is spotless. Look at that, not a single dent. So, it might be a good candidate for restoration. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it for 500 bucks. I mean, you really, really can't go wrong. Um, so now we have a running driving bike for $500. But yeah, this one's really cool. I'm definitely keeping this one. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we end up doing with it. Definitely a cool bike you don't see very often. So, hope you guys enjoyed the process of going through this thing, getting it running after 20 years of it sitting in a barn and uh, taking it for the first test drive in 20 years. It's definitely fun uh, reviving these old bikes. So, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video, and until next time, we are out.